Charlie, great to see you today. Look forward to, to chatting today about the Inflation Reduction Act and the impacts that it's had uh, at the state level. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, looking forward to it. Always a pleasure. Let's talk IRA and utilities. Yeah, so um, as you know, we, we often collaborate with um, regulated utilities. It's a big part of our, our client base and, um, and the state public utility commissions that regulate many of our clients were some of the first um, to engage with and kind of determine how the IRA was going to impact, uh, you know, utility resource planning and um, kind of project development. And one of the things that we saw immediately, which I mean, and you may see this as well with some of the developers that you work with was just kind of identifying, you know, how the IRA would um, provide funding opportunities and kind of um, provide dollars for uh, certain projects and technologies uh, that utilities, you know, wanted to develop. And so um, I think that, you know, it was this kind of monumental legislation that, that you know, everyone was looking forward to. But the initial kind of phase that we worked with clients on is, OK, how, how can we take these provisions and and maximize the, the, the benefits for for customers and drive down costs for renewable resources? Sure. Yeah. And it, it also has a lot of different effects on different types of generation, uh, you know, bet new benefits for batteries, hydro, it kind of runs the board. So absolutely. And, 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 and that's a, that's a good point because I think that, you know, with battery storage, that's, that's one example where, you know, there, the ITC provisions, the tax provisions that uh, were part of the IRA really kind of unlocked energy storage as a resource for, for many utilities, um, you know, previously before the IRA, um, storage as a standalone storage was not eligible for a tax credit. And so um, there was this kind of new carrot that was available for utilities. And so many utilities immediately, um, you know, refiled plans or uh, immediately developed plans on how can we start to deploy this storage, which previously may have been cost prohibitive, you know. And um, I think that now, uh, given the the ITC provisions and, and, and the way that that helps bring down those costs, utilities are able to add storage uh, to its o kind of uh, overall above uh, all of the above strategy for um, providing and ensuring reliability during the uh, transition. Yeah, and that, that's what I wanted to ask you about. So do you think that the, the new benefits from the IRA for battery storage in particular have kind of legitimized battery storage in the eyes of public use or um, the commission, state commissions? Yeah, I think that, that that's that's a good question. And I, and I think that uh, what it really did is allow uh, the utilities to um, to develop the projects at scale to help legitimize further. Right. I think before there was a lot of research and development and demonstration projects. But, um, you know, the commissions are really excited now to actually deploy the projects at different, whether it's a two hour, four hour and, and standalone projects to see, okay, we have a project at scale. Here's the cost that, you know, customers are paying for it. And we'll really be able to evaluate, you know, the benefits um, that customers are receiving for those costs. And so, um, you know, we'll be excited to see, uh, you know, what how utility commissions come out. But I think even getting over that first step was difficult before uh, some of these provisions in the IRA were, were available. Um, and, I, and I think another point, you know, I think that I mentioned earlier that state commissions were kind of the, the first to engage um, with the statute. You know, uh, I, an example is like in Florida, right? I mean, part of the, the provisions in the IRA um, allow for solar for, for certain solar projects to that utilities can choose between the ITC and the PTC. And so um, it was just a few months after the legislation passed that, uh, you know, in Florida, there were already utilities that were um, filing requests with the commission to de they had determined, um, you know, this is the most beneficial option for customers. And so that's just an example where before there was no option. You get this sure. one tax credit. But now utilities and the entire uh, community um, and marketplace are able to kind of uh, evaluate, see what what works best for whatever project and um, you know, from from our client's perspective, ensure that customers are really getting uh, the, the bang for their buck. So we're already seeing pretty significant ripple effects, even, yeah. even in the short, short period after the passage. Yeah. And, and I'd be interested to know, you know, from you. Right. And I know that you work with a lot of uh, developers and independent power producers um, pre IRA. Right. I, we, at the state level and for utilities, we've seen this kind of immediate impact. But I guess we're were you already seeing kind of storage and, and some of these uh, cleaner technologies uh, uh, being deployed at a rapid pace or how has the IRA impacted that? Sure. 
and with storage in particular, that was already kind of a, a surging industry. And I feel like the IRA has really just supercharged that. Um, Pre-IRA, storage was already viewed as being important in the eyes of many for the clean renewable transition, renewable energy transition, uh, just because it pairs so nicely with these you know, solar, wind, intermittent renewable resources. So I, I think with the IRA, now you're going to see you know, with, with utilities really stepping into the game more, we, we've already started to see a bit of a supply chain crunch mm -hmm. for battery storage equipment. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's just going to, it's already a hot industry and I, it seems like it's just going to continue that way. Yeah, and, I, and, and it's, it's funny because now that utilities kind of have the option of developing and, and in addition to obtaining it from, from private developers, it's, we really say that it's kind of like a Swiss Army knife storage because it really can serve many purposes and um, utilities are able to use storage um, when they need it and how they need it, depending on uh, whatever kind of issues the grid or the system is facing at that time. Uh, Charlie, I've, been, I've enjoyed talking to you today and picking your brain about the IRA. I think that, you know, we're, we've talked about some of the initial impacts and there's still probably a lot more that we will see as, um, you, you know, these, these provisions play out and um, maybe we can come back again and, and I can pick your brain further on that. Yeah, it's certainly still developing. It's going to be exciting to see how, how things play out. So, yeah, absolutely. it's been a pleasure.